Hi there, it's Bill with Smart Trades, and it's September 20th, Monday. It's about 11.36 a.m. Pacific Time, and uh, the markets have moved a little higher since I initially uh, did these charts. So my apologies for that, but uh, you'll get the general idea, hopefully. Um, here's a review, first of all, of the S&P 500 cash. And uh, here's the, the chart that I posted some time ago in terms of projecting uh, time and price which uh, my ideal target again is about 1157 basis, the S&P cash, and looking for a peak in perhaps the first week in October. I think the, uh, the fifth would be an exact uh, replica of the uh, time-wise of, of the A wave up. But we shall see uh, these kinds of uh, projections are, are really just kind of roadmaps, and uh, we want to see what the traffic looks like when we actually get to our destination, so to speak. So. Uh, you know, keep in mind predicting the future is uh, sometimes a little bit of a, a tough business. So um, this is the ideal target, uh, October 5th, around uh, 11.57, but let's take it one step at a time. Um, here is the NASDAQ uh, uh, 100 cash index, and the NASDAQ has already uh, exceeded the ideal A equals C scenario, the, the classic Elliott relationship for uh, an A, uh, A wave relationship to a C wave. So uh, another reason to stay alert here for a possible peak before we actually reach that uh, ideal target on the S&P. Uh, you know, the basic pattern uh, of, of an ABC up has already uh, completed uh, basis the, uh, the daily charts. Uh, or potentially completed, I should say. Uh, you know, th it, to be honest, the uh, short-term patterns look like they are going to go uh, somewhat higher. Exactly where I don't know yet. Um, and here, indeed, is an attempt uh, at counting the uh, short-term pattern on the Nasdaq 100. And I feel that this count is uh, is forced to say the least. Uh, I I really don't know uh, how to count this short-term pattern at this point. Uh, it would seem that that perhaps we're still in a third wave to the upside. And you can well adjust or argue that uh, my labeling here is incorrect. And uh, uh, also here's a update of the breadth ratios basis the uh, NASDAQ advancing issues, which are quite strong still. Uh, the indications from that are that higher prices are still yet to come. And here's the uh, advanced decline line on the NYSE. And the uh, hourly chart of the uh, S&P 500. And please note the low occurred uh, on the cash on August 27th. Um, now here we have the spiders. That low actually occurred on the 25th. So the question, when you look at these two charts, you know, where do you start your count from? Is this one or is this one? And uh, with that, that in mind, I think it's uh, difficult at this point in time to really come up with a, a perfectly precise uh, count uh, off of the lows in late August. And uh, here is the Russell 2000 uh, uh, surrogate in the, uh, the IWM 60-minute uh, chart. And indeed, uh, that low was on the 24th. So you actually have for those uh, three different indices, you actually have three different uh, dates for the low of this move and uh, your starting point for counting up. So the bottom line at this point is uh, I'm uncertain of the short term count and uh, I, I think it's probably got somewhat higher to go. Let's uh, stick with that 1157 target basis, the S&P, but with the caution that uh, this market you know, has already ha uh, put in a com potentially completed pattern to the upside. You know, we'll have to see, we'll have to watch it, uh, you know, as it develops and look for things like momentum and breadth and uh, volume. But uh, I'm still looking for somewhat higher prices. Um, here we have something interesting. Uh, this is the uh, uh, FXI or the uh, uh, China 25. Uh, it's a basically surrogate for uh, the Chinese market. And one thing that I think is important to note is the decline into the uh, 2009 low. Uh, obviously, we bottomed in 2009 for this index. Is clearly a corrective decline. It's an ABC. It's a three-wave pattern. 
Uh, so the implication of that is that uh, eventually we're going to see higher prices uh, you know, in the intermediate or longer term. Moreover, I think the best count off of that uh, 2009 low, you have a clear impulse up. You've got an ABC back down. So this counts as one, two, a third wave up. And from there, a corrective decline, which can be counted either as a, a possible contracting triangle with a slight irregularity in C, or perhaps as, a, a, as something else. But the bottom line is th the decline from the 2009 peak uh, looks very much corrective. And the implication of that is that uh, this indeed is a, an impulsive pattern, one, two, three, four, five, uh, you know, ideally up to a, a moderate new high before we correct. And indeed, correct is the, the key word here, that this market should not take out the 2009 low uh, if this count is correct. And uh, it's worth noting, I think, that I think if the Chinese market is not going to crash, I don't believe w the U.S. market is going to go to, say, Dow 40, as some folks are predicting. So um, I think it's interesting to note uh, the China 25 uh, looking like it's it should make new highs before it makes new lows. Here's our uh, gold chart. And again, we've been looking for a peak in gold. Gold has somewhat exceeded uh, our target. I believe it got up to... Well, let's see, I think it's about 1286. I'm not sure if that's still the intraday high. Our, tar our ideal target, I believe, was 1282, 1283. I'd have to look back on my charts to see what I posted before. So we have taken that out by a bit. But you know, right now, we're basically sitting on uh, the top of that channel. There's no confirmation that a top is in. That said, uh, it's almost an ideal uh, hit on uh, both trend lines of the weekly and, and daily charts uh, on declining volume. So certainly worth watching uh, gold here. And here's the British pound. This chart is somewhat of a mess. I've used the hourly, or excuse me, the 120 minute close only chart. That sort of cleans it up. Uh, there's a lots of overlaps on these 24 hour charts, oftentimes even in impulsive type patterns. And if you use the close only charts, it, it cleans it up a bit. Perhaps it's uh, to some purists, it may not be the right way to count, but I think uh, the best way to count this pattern is that indeed we do have a potentially five up and uh, that would indicate that we're in a, a correction, obviously. And as long as the uh, 154 area holds, perhaps a little higher than that, perhaps uh, 154.50, um, I would say that there's a good chance that the, the pound is uh, going to work its way higher here over the weeks, to weeks ahead. Uh, that said, the low risk entry point has, uh, has come and gone, and uh, this is not an ideal uh, market to trade at this point. And just a quick review on crude oil. Crude has, has hit our recent targets and, and turned very uh, uh, well off of them. Uh, we had two uh, basic uh, ABC patterns up on two degrees of scale. That said, now we've kind of got this market in no man's land. Uh, you can actually count the entire decline uh, off of the highs um, earlier this year as a corrective decline. Um, perhaps we're forming a triangle, something of that nature. At any rate, uh, basically, to my way of thinking, uh, you know, right here, right now, crude oil is in no man's land. Although we had some good sell signals, uh, I would stay away from it right here. Anyway, that's about it for now. Again, a synopsis is that the uh, stock market's likely to work its way higher, but I would be cautious here as we're starting to approach our targets. Uh, in fact, the uh, S&P is uh, at 1140 basis, the cash 114060 uh, at this second. So uh, we're only uh, 17 points away from our ideal target. We may yet get there, but uh, beware because uh, the basic pattern has, uh, has potentially completed. And uh, I think we've got a little higher to go, at least on the short term. But after a little pullback and perhaps some uh, negative breadth divergences, uh, I would take a look at the short side of this market possibly. Uh, but again, let's cross that bridge when we get to it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.